We're gonna talk about quick changes, and for one particular reason, this quick change, a little bit of confusion. For a Corvette, you can run these in either a transaxle format, which means they would be upside down and then it connects to a rear transmission, or in a normal format, which means it would sit this way and use a drive shaft and a transmission. What happened was, because I specified diff Corvette through email, this diff is for a rear transaxle, so, I, that's not a problem. All we need to do is disassemble it, flip the crown inside and put it back together. The reason for that is because if we hook this up, it would actually spin the wheels backwards so I could do 200 kilometers an hour but in reverse. We're gonna peel this open. And we're gonna show you all the inner workings of a diff and all of the little tricks and all of the design features and where the quick change actually originated from. A lot of people don't even know that these mounts that we use to hold the diff in the car are actually brake caliper mounts on a dirt track car and they never change the dimensions. They just left them there and it's what we use on all of our diff mounts to hold it for drifting and no one even knows that this actually has a brake caliper that you can buy and bolt right to it for like sprint cars and stuff. Without further ado, we're going to talk about a couple things and peel this baby open. Now you can't do this on any other drift car. I can just come in here and scoop this baby up right out of the top. Okay, we're gonna start by taking the rear cover off because that needs to be flipped anyways. I'm not right-handed. <laughs> First tip is these are aluminum. They always have been aluminum because the torque does not need to be very high. So be careful. Don't torque these. In our first look at the rear end of the diff, you'll notice we have two support bearings. They gave us longer gear, longer bolts for the sides. And basically this is a look at how this diff actually works. So you'll notice that the input shaft or the lower shaft actually comes in the bottom here. And this is connected to the front. So your drive shaft is spinning this. You install any ratio of quick change gears here. You can use our quick change gear ratio wheel speed chart that's on our website. We've had hundreds of downloads on this and uh, really glad I made it and a lot of people were able to use it. Transferring your input to the pinion, which then transfer that rotation into the crown. Now what makes this diff I'm gonna try and spin this for you. You can kind of see it. The ratio from here to the output flanges, which are what these are called, is a 412. The, the 412 is determined by the pinion and the crown. This is the strongest ratio for a diff. It's a 10 inch size crown, so 254 millimeters, making it the size that it is. That's why it looks so much bigger than normal diffs, but it is the best strongest and most common ratio because when we're setting up a car for drifting oftentimes we will be plus or minus 412 so on a bigger track you might be 412 405 393 like you might be right around that range because we want to get up in the 2 to 220 kilometer an hour wheel speed in fourth gear which is our one to one gear on the GSR and then on the shorter tracks we still want to use fourth gear so we'll actually be taking this gear set, flipping it, increasing the ratio, lowering the wheel speed. So we'll be up in the high fours, low fives to run a lower, a slower track. So for example, in Driftmasters, if I'm running Finland, I'm gonna be running, I think I was running somewhere around a 4.66 to a 4.83. But for a track like where we just were, Riga, we are running a, basically a 4.12, which is gonna give us right around 210 kilometers an hour so still running fourth gear but I'm able to do that using this quick change between the two tracks fourth gear being the strongest gear because when you put it in fourth gear all you're doing is connecting the input shaft 
to the output shaft using the dog ring. So there actually is no transfer of energy through gears. It is in and then out. So you literally can't brake a transmission in fourth gear because it's not using any gears. That's only for dog box style. If you're using sequential or standard transmissions, you are still gonna be going through gears, still gonna risk failing, but with the GSR, fourth gear, indestructible. Moving on, let's blast the rest of this apart. Pretty crazy. This is the bigger upgraded 35 spline output flange. Bulldog, you can only get it in the 35 spline, but with a Winters, you can get it with a 35 or a 33. 33 being what I actually broke. I sheared this spline on mine, uh, my S14 back in the day, then upgraded to the 35. This is where I have to remove the bell on this side, bring it over to this side, and flip it and put it back on. And that is actually going to change the direction of rotation because I'm taking the crown and I'm taking it from what is on the right side currently and I'm gonna put it on the left side. That actually changes the direction of rotation because when you flip the diff, you're essentially flipping the crown. So you have to keep the crown on the same side in order to turn the same way, if that makes sense. I need this to go here. We have our shim stacks. These are what determines the pressure, the proper pressure preload onto the bearings. We're gonna do the same thing so that we maintain our preload. And here you get a fantastic look at the internals of this quick chain. So this is what they call a spool. A spool is essentially a welded diff. Basically, it's solid. You cannot really break this this will withstand basically anything you can throw at it. What you're gonna do is, if you are gonna break anything, it's gonna be your axle first, or it's gonna be your output flanges. That's what I've found, because I've broken both axle and output flange. But you can really see the quality of the diff once you open it up and how crazy it looks. Um, I'm gonna turn this sideways for you, because this diff also has the biggest upgraded lower shaft that you can buy as well. Take a look at that. This is the meat and potatoes of your diff. The crown was on this side. All I need to do is flip it and reassemble so that I have my breather at the top. I have my backing plate, again, going at the top. So I'm gonna flip all of these parts. It's super cool how these diffs can actually be built this way. Could do it better. Do one more. Yeah, the first one was it. The first one was it. So you'll notice inside of the diff, you actually have quite a bit of room here where we have the spool. This can also fit a torsion LSD inside, which is a limited slip differential. It's not that common to be used in drifting, but it's obviously very common to be used on any type of circuit racing and there are some drivers that do use it and swear by the torsion LSD. Another thing to note is that the input to the crown from the pinion to the crown is actually dead center with the center of the shaft. This is called a spiral bevel crown drive. That is different from what we'd use on standard vehicles. On standard vehicles, the input is, normally you're not gonna have a lower shaft with a quick change, so normally your input is coming in at a lower angle, which reduces road noise, friction, a bunch of other things, but it also reduces horsepower. So you'll notice that these diffs are quite whiny, they're quite loud, they sound like gears moving. That's because of the spiral bevel design. It is better for racing, it is better in every way, but it is not better for what the road application is. Manufacturers may also put the drive shaft at a lower angle, it is also for ground clearance and for cockpit clearance. Obviously, these are passenger vehicles meant to have passengers inside, so when the drive shaft is passing under your seats, it needs to be entering in at a lower angle.
We typically run a skid plate on these diffs. You'll notice that the skid plate requires a slightly longer bolt. We do include these with our skid plates for the quick change, but just make sure if you're buying a skid plate that doesn't come with the bolts, you'll probably not have enough thread engagement to install it. Another thing to note is that these output flanges receive a 930 Porsche CV. That is the standard style for every single quick change that's been made. Um, on these diffs, it, it comes as a 3 8 24 right hand thread. Make sure that you have spares of those because if these bolts come loose, it simply shears all six of them and then you'll be left with the ends of a thread that you'll having to be welding a nut to to pull them out. Done it before. We check them all the time, so it's not happened on my car, but I've seen it happen. Okay, throw a cover back on. One more thing you'll notice, these are studs, obviously. The only position that has a stud is right where it would have traveled through the lower shaft. What is Kyle doing? When these discs were first released by Bulldog, you could actually buy them through us. We were buying five at a time. Now, because of the lead time and because of the amount of money required to do that, you can buy these from us still on a special order with the FTF race up on the back. It is the maximum upgrade that the diff will come, so 1500 plus horsepower rated. Otherwise, you can buy these through probably 10 different retailers. They're all going to be the same. Drift HQ, of course, has these probably in stock. I think they were buying 20 at a time. So the difference is there. I have run these three diffs now on three different cars and they have all been flawlessly working. The only thing that I have to point out that you'll want to do is block the breather. The breather is a 1 8 MPT. Everybody in Driftmasters has it blocked. We actually had probably a two meter long uh, relocation with a breather and it was still uh, bleeding oil. So you can plug it, it won't blow the seals or anything like that. It'll work perfectly fine. So I do recommend plugging this because you'll end up just having oil dripping. Not a flaw, I'm sure that under different circumstances this breather works just fine. Like it's important to have a breather on dirt track stuff and things like that. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. That is the tip Tuesday that Jack is going to have to whip together because it's literally Tuesday.